Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I just uh, realized there's been exactly one year since we spoke uh, about uh, how we kickstart our uh, Gen AI journey together on uh, Bridgewater and some of the amazing ideas uh, we had. So I'm looking forward to diving deep into what both our teams have done together and uh, how much Bridgewater has pushed in our uh, their Gen AI journey and all the innovation. Can you share uh, or tell us a bit more about your current role and how you got here? So for almost 50 years now, Bridgewater has systematically invested in markets across the globe based on our fundamental understanding of what drives those markets and economies. We've then programmed that understanding into what we call an expert system, or what everyone calls an expert system, which every day pulls data from the outside world, runs it through the logic that we've we've programmed in, and outputs positions on markets. All of those positions are still fundamental, fundamental, not high frequency or something like that. Then about a year ago, um, Greg Jensen, who's one of our co-CIOs at Bridgewater and has been heavily involved in AI and ML for over a decade now, decided that it was time to assemble an interdisciplinary team of investors, data scientists, machine learning engineers, and technologists to basically rethink our process and to create an AI, AI ML first process for generating investment logic that is also capable of improving itself over time. That's what we're calling the Artificial Investment Associate. And so my responsibility within that as the CTO is for shaping the technical vision and strategy working with those other partners. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, uh, amazing uh, charter, especially the pivot into uh, like uh, AI enabled, um, I mean, uh, technology to um, do some of the analysis. Uh, in such a uh, charter, what role does cloud and particularly say AWS in your uh, AI and data strategy play in? Uh, I mean, a, hu a, hu a huge role. Um, for 10 years now, almost 10 years now, Bridgewater has been partnering with AWS to power our expert system. So that whole, uh, that whole process that I was talking about before uh, churns through a lot of data and requires a lot of compute to run every day. And that's all in, in S3, EKS, and other AWS services. And the architecture, which I'll go over later, that we're proposing for AYA and we're implementing for AYA is not wholly new. We're keeping a lot of the tabular concepts and the deep connection to data to test our hypotheses. That's all staying the same. What we're doing is we're introducing the capabilities of these foundational models to actually reason and create hypotheses. Uh, and so we're marrying both the, the fundamental understanding and the systematic in order to create what we think is going to be a a very powerful system that can self-loop and self-teach. Got it. Uh, can you share more? You talked about foundational models. Um, can you share more uh, how your, what are some of the top uh, problems you're trying to solve with these uh, LLMs or foundational models? And uh, uh, how, how are you doing it with Amazon Bedrock and why did you choose uh, Bedrock to do so as well? So. Yep, yeah, definitely. So the, as we're looking at our process, our, our investment process, we think that these foundational models have a place in almost every step of, of, our, of our research circle. Um, and so what we're doing is we're trying to stretch them as much as possible. For anyone who's even spent a little bit of time with one of these models, such as Claude, um, you're probably, and we, we, we're also very impressed with how well it can perform with a very focused task. If you give it the right data, you ask it one question, it will give you a pretty good answer. Where the foundational models, the, the first challenge that we found and where these foundational models kind of trip over themselves a bit is when you ask them to do more than just a simple analysis. Uh, and of course, in order to compete in fin global financial markets, we have to do something that's more than simple. Um, and so what we're, what we're doing with Bedrock and, and foundational models in general is and one of the reasons why we, we really like Bedrock is that um, we need to be flexible. We need to be able to plug in the right model at the right time 
Bedrock is a great abstraction la layer over that. There's other benefits that I'm happy to go into as well. But uh, first and foremost, um, what's most important to us is that we're getting the best models available to Aya um, and that we're able to plug those in pretty seamlessly. And Bedrock has done a great job in uh, you know, launching with Claude, which was an, a very impressive model at the time, and continuing to add models over, over time. So the Llama, the Llama series, uh, Cohair, um, and now the latest Claude, which is even even more impressive than before. Uh, Aaron, uh, your point on uh, how the best model for the right task uh, really resonates with uh, me because that is the fundamental thesis, uh, one of the major fundamental thesis that drove uh, Bedrock as its design that uh, customers wanted the right model for each of it, and it's not always one model. So maybe uh, that is a good uh, segue into uh, uh, understanding that better. Maybe can you double click and tell maybe a little more color or details on your solution with uh, Bedrock? Uh, which models did you choose? How did you go about choosing? Are there more than one models? If you can give some color, that would be super helpful. Sure. I mean, to start, we just started with the best model, which was Claude, for general reasoning. Um, and then what we've done over time is I've created a uh, basically an interface. So this is an, another thing that, I'll, anyways, I'll, I'll go into quickly, is that um, another thing that we've learned over the past year is that the best prompt engineers are actually the people who are trying to get the most value out of the product. Mm. And so it's not someone on the tech team that is going to be the best prompt engineer. For us, the best prompt engineers are actually our investors. <laughs> and so we've spent a lot of time making it very easy for them to iterate and interact with the various models and create and, and plumb together a series of calls such that they can actually achieve the goal. Um, because to, to me, if I ask it a, a, um, a question about finance or about markets, they all sound about equal. But to our experts, they can tell the difference very quickly. And then they're able to iterate on that. And so we started with Claude as, as that, was the most, um, that was the most generally capable. And then over time, we've added other models. What we've done is we've found that sometimes the quick model is the right model to go to. Sometimes the, the slower and more expensive and possibly more thoughtful model is the right model. And sometimes we've experimented with it a bit. Um, you, you'll, need to, you'll want to fine tune a model. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rare. And honestly, we've, we'd, we did a little bit of experimentation, but are currently happier using the best foundational models instead of, uh, instead of our own fine tunes for, for most use cases. Yeah. Uh, that totally makes sense. And uh, you're alluding already to it uh, that uh, this is just the beginning of the journey. So which uh, makes me wonder, so how do you see uh, Richwater accelerating and amplifying the business objectives with tools like Bedrock and whatnot? So what are you seeing as the benefit to your business or employees or end customers in a way? We're finding it across the business. Um, there, there are various. So, in the investment side, it's more all, along the lines of this analyst assistant that we're that we're working on. We did a proof of concept with the Gen AI um, Innovation Center from AWS this past summer, and uh, Aya, the product, is helping uh, do that even better and handle some of the more complex questions that used to need to be first handled by a human. Now instead, Aya takes the first crack at it. The human obviously is still reviewing absolutely everything that we that goes out the door. But um, it is, it is adding. It's taking care of that twenty percent of the really tricky questions. It's um, it's improving the process there. So it is like using a combination of things like. Uh... Uh, RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation, you are able to feed in data to address some of the, take some of the initial weight of questions and then pass on the harder ones to humans where more judgment is required. Is that kind of how I should think about yeah, it? Yeah, or, or even, even more so, like, you know, we'll match a question to the closest answer and that's generally, that's the easy, that's the easy 80%. That's awesome. Some of the more complex one, there wasn't an answer ever in our data. So you'd rag it all you want, you're never gonna find the right answer. <laughs> However, you could rag, you're gonna get some things that are close enough. And now with a model like Claude 3 Opus or probably even Haiku at times, um, you, can, uh, you can get an answer that is 
pretty good. It's yeah. still not out the door good for us, mm -hmm. but it's good. In, it's good enough to save a lot of time for our analysts to to then uh, use that as the first draft. Uh, I do have one question. I said meet. Uh, I mean, uh, part of my uh, my role, I end up meeting a lot of actually customers who are onboarding and uh, setting up uh, their Gen AI strategy. So and. Uh, uh, all this. Uh, so as someone who has been further, way further along in that journey and looking to scale more and more, what advice would you give to your uh, fellow CTOs and CIOs on uh, how to get started, what works well, and what doesn't work well, and so forth? There's a, there's a lot of learnings that I had over the past year. Um, so I don't know if I'll get them all out, but, but I'll try. Um, so the first thing is be clear about what your value add is. Why can't um, Claude out of the box address your user's problems? Why can't Perplexity out of the box address your user's problems? Once you, once you know that, create an infrastructure, create a platform that, um, that expects most of the components to change over time. Things are just moving so fast that you have to build in order to slot in the next best model or the next best API or whatever it may be. Um, so that's that's number two. Um, number three is what I alluded to earlier of likely the best prompt engineers for you are your subject matter experts, so your end users. I do think that surfacing um, the knobs to the to the end users is actually pretty powerful in many cases, and you'll be surprised about how much faster um, the capabilities or the use cases evolve. Um, if you're able to bring users in close to that to that process, so those are I would say those are the three um, three most important things um, that I would if if I were to start over I would I would have those top of mind. That's uh, fascinating. You're saying uh, hey one uh, it's, uh, the value add should be more than just a model, and it's not just about even having one model. It can be chain of models, and third, which is not obvious, I don't think to everyone is. Bringing your users in the loop, especially potentially the end users, so that they um, give direct uh, feedback and iterate on uh, what is the best customer experience. It's not obvious because they are usually are viewed as one step remote, uh, especially for some of yeah. these use cases. So, uh, totally yes, and and what's really like what's cool about the interface to uh, to these models is that it's natural language yeah. and everyone can speak natural language yeah. um, it's not even english it's any language yeah. um, and so and so really um, removing what i try to do is remove the mystique like just try it yeah. um, like yeah. you're as capable as i am at writing a sentence yeah. um, and yeah. so i'm not going to write it for you you're going to go write it and try it out um, and yeah. we've found that uh, that's been really really impactful okay uh, that sounds great uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, I'll just say, uh, I mean, it's really amazing to see how far um, your team and our teams have uh, come together uh, in the past year. And I know we're, we're just getting started and there is more innovation to come. So really looking forward to this, uh, uh, building more together uh, as an, um, a team as well. Really appreciate your partnership uh, on that front. Yes, and 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 likewise, we I, we're building on on your foundations, um, and it's been it's it's so great to get to like I have the privilege of focusing on my problem. I don't need to worry about the other things. Well, sorry, one quick example of that was Textract. Um, yeah. In order for RAG to be effective, or this retrieval augmented generation, you have to somehow go from these PDFs, which are very complex, to more or less text. Markdown is, is is probably the best, um, yeah. and that's a problem that I immediately started seeing. Of like the quality of my responses were bad because the data was in the PDF, but it was difficult to get it out. And all the Python and and open source um, models that were out there just weren't doing a good job. And then I then we we did a whole we did a pretty extensive review of all the options, and TextTrack was really impressive at being able to pull out that data and get it into a nice markdown form. And so this is an EPAM financial report. Uh, there's a company called EPAM. This is, this is their, their quarterly report from 2023, I think. 
And uh, if you've ever spent time trying to extract text out of tables from PDFs, you know that this is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and you know, it gets everything right, including you know the the skipping the columns and whatnot. And so, uh, this is uh, Textract is now our preferred um, uh, PDF parser, um, and we're finding better and more relevant and accurate results in our RAG pipelines as a result. That's awesome. And uh, the way you're leveraging Textract is you're uh, in your doc ingestion pipeline, you're running it through Textract and storing it in a knowledge base or so for it to run RAG and analysis on top. Is that accurate? That's exactly it. And we and then we we use Claude, uh, Claude 3 to extract um, keywords, author, a bunch of information, and also a summary of the of the document. And we, we have a little bit of tweaks that we'll still be doing to it, but it's it's really close, and 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 so that's just an example of the of the type of um, uh, the type of platform and 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 general features that that a customer like Bridgewater and IL Labs you know really values. Would love for you to show a demo of uh, IL and uh, what is the art of possible today with that. Uh, so feel free to jump in, Aaron. Great, great, thank you. So this is the first interface of IL. Um, is takes the form of a chat interface. And what we're about to run here is a blueprint. A blueprint is a set of steps, which I'll show in a second, which is able to answer questions that might be more complex than just a single prompt question response. Got and so it. the first question we're going to ask Aya is, how, how do you form views on economies and markets? Okay. So I'm going to kick that off. And you can see right now there are 14 steps. I was breezing through the first few and now is thinking about this seventh step. And I'm going to flip over to a graph of all of the calls. These are the 14 steps. Is this coming through well? Yeah. Great. And so what you can see here is each step is either an LLM call. It could also be an API call. It's kind of a generic concept. Um, and the outputs of, of a step will go will be part of the prompt or input of other steps. And so I'm going to jump back to uh, to Aya, who's finishing up um, their answer. And so I won't read this out loud, but basically I is saying that I have a fundamental understanding and I test that understanding and study market history. And then we're also able to show the um, the reasoning engine, this is a circle that I was talking about earlier of, of how we do research. Um, this can be a chart. There, basically, it's it's unlimited of what I is able to go ahead and display. It's it's anything that um, we currently display in our own reports. Hmm. OK, uh, that is uh, super powerful. And, uh, and you do it at scale with a uh, huge number of documents and uh, constantly getting ingested on a regular basis, I presume. Yes, yes, we're, we're, we're in the process of scaling up. It's, uh, um, and we haven't hit any limits yet. So. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, uh, just even a simple demo, something like AI, yeah, what uh, it does, especially it's not just a simple one uh, answer, uh, just out of uh, a model plus uh, a single shot, but it's uh, like multi stage planners. Uh, less execution is, are super fascinating. I can see that starting to take on more and more complex reasoning tasks and being able to execute. So you can see that. Yeah, we, yeah, definitely. Like that's definitely the direction. And even so we're moving with into agents now with function calling and lane graph. Um, the agent workflows are actually pretty manageable at this point in time. And we're finding it's more, um, more reliable. But I still think there's a place for this blueprint type concept of and an extended chain of calls that is that is really well tuned via prompting to uh, to achieve a, a goal reliably, and so the agents can call the the blueprints no problem. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it is uh, such an uh, you know the thing about this generative AI demo, sir, that uh, it looks so simple uh, for all the amazing work it does uh, under the hood, uh, and uh, it is such transformative for the end users. It's super fascinating what it does. So, 
uh, and uh, how much innovation uh, is packed in it. Uh, thanks again for showing that to us. Uh, I'm really of looking course. forward to seeing this more and more. So that's one. Uh, uh, thanks again thank uh, uh, for no, thank you. being here and uh, showcasing your work. Hopefully, we get to see uh, either in your, uh, I mean, uh, at least by reinvent, if not sooner. Okay. All right. Yes, definitely. Sounds good. That's good. All right, sir. Hey, thanks All again. Right. Have a good see one. You. All right. See you. Bye.